Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for joining us for part one of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of April 24th through April 28th, where we'll try to see, will April showers bring May flowers in the stock market? So lately we've had some uh, April showers in the stock market, and let's see if we can discern if that will bring us May flowers in the stock markets going forward. So let's get started. So here's our Google document with our notes for part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week. Again, these Google documents are publicly accessible. You should be able to find a link so you can access our notes in the description box below. We store all of our Google documents with our notes for our weekly trading game plans in a publicly accessible Google Drive folder. And you can find a link to that Google Drive folder also in the description box below. So you can refer back to these notes for this week and also previous weeks. Our notes contain links to bonus videos, all the tools that we use for our market analysis, our strategies, etc. Welcome Clifford Mathley, the Ricky Khan. Thank you for joining us in the live chat today. We hope you all are doing well. So we'll start out and we'll see how the markets ended up on Friday. We'll go to the homepage of Finviz. We can see all of the markets that were very choppy on Friday, ended up with a very small gain. We had a market on close positive market on close push. Uh, we see a lot of uh, weakness still in the market. So the advancers and decliners was pretty split 50-50. Uh, more new lows, 60 to 40 uh, versus new highs. We still have 57% uh, below their 50-week or 50-day moving average. And again, 55% below the 200. So again, as we've been talking for the past couple of weeks, the market's been very choppy, very range bound. And we'll see that the indices as well. So again, a lot of weakness under the markets, um, a lot of chop, a lot of range bound activity. Uh, we see, you know, Amazon, Tesla made a rebound, Lilly, uh, P&G, who we'll talk uh, hopefully a little bit about the inflationary factors, pricing of P&G. Um, but otherwise, there weren't, weren't a whole lot of, you know, very positive or very negative uh, sectors in the market. We'll talk about basic materials when we look at sectors and, and what caused the decline in basic materials. So we see some of the recent news, economic uh, mood. Frustrating. Again, it's been very choppy, not a lot of momentum, not a lot of follow through. Uh, issues with the China chips market. And again, the banking collapse. We've been talking about that for a while. Welcome, Ollie in the Bay, Flip of the Shippa. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you as well. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, we saw crude oil broke down below 80. Uh, we'll see now it's been uh, bouncing between, you know, uh, in the high 70s, 75 and 80. Now 80 is providing a resistance point. Uh, natural gas, again, we've been talking for quite a while. It's been, you know, range bound bouncing between two and three. Uh, gold's been really hovering around 2000. We'll see how it's been consolidating and how 2000 is a primary support. And then we see right now the futures on the indices are pointing positive. See the yields on the treasuries pushed up a little bit on Friday, still below 4%, still inverted. Uh, the dollar strengthened a little bit on some PMI data on Friday, uh, but again, it's been hovering around the 101, 102 level, and we'll see that as well. So look at each of the indices. Morning, MD. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. So I see again a lot of a lot of chop, a lot of cyclicality in in the spy. The S and P 500 uh, did briefly breach the upper trend line of this channel. The channel is pretty flat, trending downward a little bit, uh, sitting above the moving average. Uh, we did have a kind of golden cross for a little bit, which is a positive signal. Uh, but again, very range bound, very bound by this channel. So if we zoom out to the weekly a little bit. Yeah, you know, we can see it's, you know, when it gets up to this high, it tends to get rejected. When it gets down to the low, gains support. Right now, again, it's sitting above the, the weekly moving averages. Again, we had a positive gold cross, but again, very range bound, very cyclical. And we have a doji candle on the last week, so uncertainty could be rolling over for a downward trend right now. OK, 
at the queues, very similar, had a good run, made a new high, and then kind of rolled over. Looks like it's trending back down significantly above its moving averages. So again, uh, you know, we may see it come back and, and come back and retest the moving averages. Um, again, what we see these pushes up in tech, uh, but again, it's pretty, pretty range bound. It hasn't broken above that previous high yet. So again, pretty range bound, pretty flat, pretty choppy with these uh, sporadic runs. Look at the Dow, EIA. Again, very similar, made a bottom, bounced up. Looks like it was going to test the high, made a, a near-term new high, didn't test the previous high. And we've got, a, again, a doji. We're sitting above the... Uh, averages significantly so you know we might get a, a rollover in the Dow as well and retest those averages again very very flat very range bound very choppy in, in all the indices um, I'll talk in a second about uh, my hypothesis about kind of what's going on uh, part of that we'll see in the VIX is the VIX is again hovering uh, this is the futures so the futures is sitting about 19, but the actual VIX itself has uh, been uh, below 17 and, and declining. So it really hasn't been able to break back up above 20. Um, and this low VIX, as we looked at, I'll go back to the, the SPY uh, weekly. Uh, my hypothesis is, and we talked about this last week, um, along with the very low volatility, says uh, the VIX is saying that it doesn't expect a significant move in, in the S&P. And so, uh, again, what we keep seeing is a very range bound. When it reaches this top, it gets rejected. And in my humble opinion, again, part of my hypothesis is that this low VIX is also another sign of a topping action. And as we talked about, there isn't a whole lot of new money. We've talked about sector rotation is the main thing holding the VIX up is they're just rotating between sectors holding the VIX up. And again, I, I think that's what's going on is uh, it's just being held up by sector rotation. The low volatility says we don't expect a major move in the near future. And so again, I, I, and we don't see any new money coming in uh, and we do see money leaving in terms of people taking money out, putting them in money markets and uh, treasury bonds, et cetera. Um, just a quick reminder, put up the manner as well. None of this is financial advice. We're not financial advisors. All of this is for education and hopefully some level of entertainment purposes only. Um, so again, my, my hypothesis is, uh, again, with the low volatility, uh, the indices are going to be continue to be range bound when they reach this top. Uh, the probability is, you know, for them to, to retrace back to their moving average. Now, unless we get some uh, external negative catalyst, I don't expect a major drop, a crash, et cetera. Although we do have the potential for a number of uh, potential negative catalysts. Um, you know, bad economic data, additional bank collapses, um, you know, the rate hike is coming up. That might uh, spur some activity, uh, China, Taiwan, tension, et cetera. So there's a lot of potential catalysts. But again, unless we get one of those negative catalysts, I don't really expect any major move downward, continue range bound, bouncing up and down, et cetera. And again, this low volatility, the low VIX is, is telling us we don't expect a breakout, don't expect a major move anytime soon. So uh, you all can tell me if you agree with that hypothesis, what you think of that hypothesis. Um, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts as well. So we'll look at the sectors from Friday, the sector rotation. Again, in my humble opinion, that's been the name of the game as late. And again, I think that's part of what's holding the, the indices up is they're just rotating money uh, from sector to sector and it's holding the, the markets up, uh, but it's not really going anywhere. Welcome EC Mike. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. MD says he agrees. I'm glad to hear that. Good morning, Walter. Thank you for all for joining us. Glad to see you all here. So we'll look at the sectors in the groups tab in FinBiz. We see Friday was kind of a risk off day. Again, we got this uh, stronger than expected PMI data. And we'll talk about the economic data. So we see, you know, 
play to safety, defensive utilities. Uh, we've been talking about real estate is slowly trying to make a comeback. Um, it's, it keeps trying and keeps uh, failing, keeps uh, getting rejected. See basic materials, um, the drop in basic materials, we'll talk about a specific case of this uh, tomorrow, is um, Chile uh, imposed a policy on their lithium mines where they want to have government control of lithium mines, and that hit the uh, lithium stocks that have mines in Chile. Uh, Albemarle, Albemarle is uh, specifically one of them and had a major decline, and so that's one of the reasons for the major decline in basic materials is, is that lithium concern. Also, we saw rotation out of energy, out of technology, again, into the defensives for the week, however. Um, Again, we see real estate was, was relatively strong, defensives, healthcare, industrials, utilities, again, pretty risk-off defensive, a rotation, a big rotation out of energy. Again, we saw oil drop below 80. Again, basic materials in general had a, a poor week. For the month, again, utilities, energy was strong for the month, although, again, a rotation. So, again, we see these rotations in and out of energy, in and out of basic materials. When we get a risk off, we get them into defensives. And, again, we see, you know, this slow movement up in real estate. And uh, as we'll see in the in industry uh, breakdown, uh, there seems to be some distinction between uh, the various components of the real estate market, commercial versus industrial versus residential etc uh, which i think is good because i think the issue is in the uh, commercial real estate area particularly in the office space area so again for the month technology was the weakest but you know we see these sporadic rotations in and out of technology so we'll look at the industries So for Friday, we saw, you know, an attempt at a pop in biotechnology. Healthcare in general was positive. Let's see if we can see utilities again, positive. Again, we're going to see basic materials. So all the basic materials got hit, gold, uranium, silver, steel, etc. And we've been talking about those rotations in and out of that, aluminum, etc. So basic materials got hit pretty hard. On Friday, solar, we've been talking about the rotations in and out of solar. So again, I think the, the name of the game, the opportunity in this market continues to be the sector rotation. So by seeing where the money is flowing into on a given day, where is it flowing out of, you can take advantage of those sector rotations. Um, and we can talk about that more. And now we see, you know, the differentiation of, of some of the REIT, some of the real estate, Although, you know, office got beaten down. They tried to, you know, run back up into office. I, I don't think that's a good idea. But again, it gets beaten down, gets uh, oversold, and, and people will uh, try to run into that. Railroads ran up on earnings, CSX earnings. So industrial REITs was positive. Again, a lot of the basic materials were negative. Silver had a decline, but again, in the futures, we'll see silver's got good support at 25. Gold's got good support at 2,000. Looks like a consolidation. Uh, and then again, we see these rotations in and out of uh, some of the basic materials. So silver and gold for the month have been very positive. Autos aluminum hasn't hasn't been doing very well, and we'll we'll look at the sector rotation, the the breakdown of the technology uh, sector, and talk about semiconductors versus biotechs, etc. I think that's uh, interesting. So let me grab a quick drink. I'll bring up uh, investing dot com's uh, economic calendar, then I'll talk about some of my notes for the week, and we'll look at. Uh, what economic data we had last week and what we've got uh, for the coming week. So, uh, again, let me grab a drink a second and I'll uh, let that calendar come up.
Okay. So there wasn't a whole lot of economic data that was terribly interesting uh, this week. We'll point out that um, as this comes out, the significant uh, economic data, I will snapshot, as you'll see, and I'll post this in the Surf the Markets channel in our Discord. Our Discord's free to join. You can find a link and invite to our Discord in the description box below. I'll also throw that up in the banner a second. Again, our Discord's free to join. And as this economic data comes out, I try to post it in the Surf the Markets channel. You can see we also have some feeds of news from both Market Watch Economy and also this Walter Bloomberg. So as uh, news gets uh, released, it gets automatically posted to our Surf the Markets channel uh, in our Discord. So again, great quick source to get uh, real-time feeds uh, for the news as well as the economic data. So Thursday, the interesting news was the jobless claims. So we see continuing jobless claims was higher than expected. Uh, initial jobless claims, again, higher than expected. So we're seeing a weakening in the job market. So essentially, the Fed's interest rates are taking effect. Um, there's more layoffs. We'll talk about some of the types of layoffs that I'm seeing and what that may indicate. But again, we see the weakening in the job market. Um, We'll also look at the PMI data in investing.com. So again, this is a slow, you know, weakening of the job market as we've been talking about for quite some time. So housing market was uh, better than expected, but new permits was weaker than expected, starts weaker than expected. So again, the housing market in general uh, is weak, although demand is, you know, significant with the higher mortgage rates. Um, again, you don't have a lot of people, so mortgage rates went up again as uh, Treasury yields went up. Saw a big drawdown in oil, and even though we saw this big drawdown in the inventories, uh, the price dropped below 80. So again, I, I don't see that these numbers are, are driving the price. I think it's much more technical at this point. Refinery utilization was up. Gasoline inventories were way up. So then again, Friday, we got the PMI data, and this showed stronger uh, manufacturing. So this is the purchasing manufacturing index, and this was stronger than expected. Uh, so this says inflation on the front end of the curve in the manufacturing sector is, and in the services sector is still higher than expected. So again, inflation's still there. The Fed has more work to do. You saw, heard several of the Fed officials come out and say they've, you know, got more work. The uh, inflation's still too high. They, they're going to need to hike rates again. Um, and, you know, as we've been talking, I expect them to write, uh, hike 25 basis points in May. Uh, we'll talk about when that meeting is. Um, and again, that's my expectation. They'll hike 25 in May. They'll probably pause. Again, my opinion, not financial advice, but I think they'll go 25 and pause, go 25 in May and then pause, and then wait to see what the overall fallout of, of their interest rate hikes to date is going to be. Uh, again, I expect inflation to slowly come down. Um, and the job market to slowly weaken, but I think it's going to take a lot longer than the market is currently expecting. Um, and they may have a significantly negative reaction to that uh, interest rate hike. Uh, we also saw the oil rig uh, count tick up a little bit, um, but again, the prices declined. Uh, so. so we'll look at the data for next week, what's coming up. So Tuesday, we've got housing, typical, new home sales, typical, mortgage rates, core, doable, good, core durable goods orders expected to decline. Again, that would be a recessionary factor. If it you know, declines more than expected, that may indicate a, a deeper, faster recession. Wholesale inventories. 
Then Thursday, we've got PCE or GDP data and initial claims. So the economic data day for potential volatility would be Thursday. So, you know, watch this date on Thursday. We'll see what the, uh, if it's uh, better or worse than expectations, I would expect uh, the market to react to this data. You see, it's all coming out about 8.30. So 8.30 Thursday is a potential volatility event. And they're also showing uh, PCE data on Friday. Yeah, some employment, wages, benefits, costs, etc. So Thursday and Friday, and also consumer sentiment. So Thursday and Friday, uh, and you'll see, you know, there'll be the market. A lot of people will be waiting uh, for that data to really make any moves. So I would expect the markets, unless something else happens, to be kind of slow Monday through Wednesday, um, and then more volatile Thursday and Friday. Again, we're in the heart of earnings season, so that would be another driver for volatility as we've got a lot of big earnings coming up this week. Again, you can see the, the whole earnings calendar on the earnings tab in investing.com. So we've got Kimberly, Kimberly Clark, so consumer, uh, Coke, again, more consumers, uh, FRC, which is the, the you know questionable regional bank is coming out soon. I think it's Monday. So that will give us some indication as to, you know, are we going to uh, have more issues with some of those regional banks? Got Whirlpool, so manufacturing, getting uh, durable goods, more banks. There's FRC, and some other banks. So again, we still got some of these regional banks reporting. Uh, we need to hear is there something that's uh, going to cause a, a further collapse in these banks? So again, I would highly recommend you you look through this, see uh, which ones might have an impact on your current portfolio and or anything you're looking to buy. Again, these earnings are going to have a major impact on the sectors and um, also the markets in general. If somebody comes out and has you know really bad uh, forecast as we've as we've seen, but so far uh, in general, so then. Tuesday, we've got Microsoft, Google, so major the mega techs. If, if they miss, uh, that's going to bring the NASDAQ down, uh, bring the markets down if they miss or, or give poor guidance. So, again, uh, mega cap techs on Tuesday. So, again, uh, so far, again, the earnings have been generally been better than expected. Uh, but, again, this was all first quarter, so... Um, you know, the interest rate hikes are just taking effect. The recession, the layoffs, et cetera, were just taking effect. You'll also hear companies taking uh, write downs due to uh, the cost of their severance or the cost of their layoffs. So uh, that cost, you know, is, is ongoing. Friday was uh, options expiration. So I posted a reminder of that in our Discord as well. Again, the next FOMC meeting is May 2nd and 3rd. So next week, we'll talk in more detail about that. We'll look at what the projections are for uh, the rate hikes for that next FOMC meeting, probably. Um, and again, my expectations is they're going to hike 25 and um, and then pause. And again, we should be in the quiet period now for the Fed officials talking. So that source of volatility um, shouldn't uh, occur uh, going until we get to that meeting. Um, also, just another reminder, we've got an automatic feed for earnings reports uh, in the in, um, earnings report channel in our Discord. So again, we have a channel in our free Discord where you can see the automatic feed uh, for these earnings reports. So as they come out very quickly, uh, they'll be reported in the earnings report channel in our Discord. So again, you can find an invite, invite to our free Discord in the description box below. Okay, so we'll look at the market screen in Weeble. Check the chat a second. I see you guys are talking about natural gas. We'll look at natural gas and oil, etc. in the futures in a minute. 
So again, uh, on Friday, you know, it's pretty split, like we've seen uh, last week, you know, pretty balanced between advancers and decliners, again, uh, split personality in the market. Uh, again, we see more inflow in the NYSE than in the NASDAQ. Again, we're seeing still money flowing out of the NASDAQ. We've seen that for a couple weeks. So, um, again, you can see a near term calendar for earnings here in Weeble in the market screen. I'm in the online browser version of Weeble on the market screen. So you can get a very near-term calendar for earnings, see who's after market close, before market open, or during market hours. Um, and that will adjust as, as they're uh, upcoming. Let's look at the best performing industries for the week. So renewable energy, that's solar. Home building, so the, the home builders themselves are not doing too bad, even though the real estate market in general is, is pretty much in recession. Uh, some retailers split, so commercial and uh, residential REITs. Again, utilities very strong, beverages. Hotels a little split, insurance split. Home building again. Look at the ETFs. First we'll look at the indices. So short on China, emerging markets. So short on China and emerging markets in Europe. Up on the Dow, short on small caps. So small, that's interesting. So small caps is short, but uh, up on the S&P in general. So that's, that's interesting. So watch out in the Russell. Uh, we've got, you know, weakness in the small caps, even though they uh, have some strength in the S&P in general. So, uh, but here we've got up on the Russell. So that's interesting, up on the small cap bull. So it uh, looks like there's some divergence in views on the small caps and the Russell. Uh, Bitcoin short, short on the VIX, short on the euro, or that's long on the euro. ULE is long on the euro. Short on China. So about some biotechs were positive. Yeah, biotechs, healthcare was very positive. Utilities, communications, energy is pretty negative. Again, this is all Friday. Basic materials, pretty negative. Technology, pretty split. 3D printing was a little positive. Cybersecurity, cloud computing, consumer staples. So again, that's pretty defensive. Real estate was pretty positive. Platinum, we'll see that, the run up in platinum, livestock, carbon, precious metals, platinum again. So I see you guys are having this discussion on uh, continuing on natural gas. Just to, uh, I'll answer that question. You know, typically we use boil versus UNG and to long natural gas and uh, cold KOLD to short natural gas. And if, when we look at our ETF spreadsheet tomorrow, we can look at the risk reward, comparative risk reward uh, of those different ways to play natural gas. But uh, just to answer that question, we use Boil, long, cold, KOLD, short, uh, oil drip uh, to short, and gush to long. And again, uh, we, we'll see the, the risk-reward profiles and why I choose those uh, in our ETF spreadsheet uh, tomorrow. So bonds, pretty positive, 3 to 7, 7 to 10. 
positive on the euro, positive on the yen. So we show the news feeds in our Surf the Markets report, so uh, you can get the news there. So I want to, I missed the futures. Let me jump over to the futures. Welcome, John. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. If you're asking about UROI, we will talk specifically about our position in UROI. We like UROI. Uh, we're currently now long again UROI, and we'll look at that uh, in more detail again tomorrow. And yes, you've got a good point, Walter, in terms of uh, the decay on the leverage ETFs. Again, it depends on, you know, uh, what's your time horizon? What kind of risk reward are you looking at? But that's it's a good point uh, that Walter's making that uh, UNG and uh, the non-leveraged ETFs uh, don't suffer from the uh, time decay. So here in the, we can see all the indices, you know, they look like, you know, they peaked out, rolled over, pretty pretty stagnant, you know, pretty range bound. Again, I, I think, again, as we talked about with the VIX, we see this decline in the VIX, you know, it popped up when the futures rolled over in terms of uh, the futures chart. But again, it's currently sitting at around, you know, 17 to very low. Uh, again, the indices, the futures look like they're all kind of rolling over. They could be headed back down to, to test their previous lows. Uh, but again, pretty range bound, pretty consolidated. Um, and again, I think it's just the sector rotations pretty much holding them all up in this range. And I would just expect more, you know, more chop. Um, not a lot of significant movement until we get some event uh, to, to cause a directionary movement. And we'll talk about our strategies. You know, how are we making money trading while uh, the markets are just kind of chopping around uh, pretty stagnant range bound. See the Russell 2 looks like it's kind of rolling over. Again, not a, a lot of movement in any of the indices lately. The Euro had a nice run. The DAX had a nice run. Looks like they might have topped out. Can we see that decline in the VIX? See, you know, oil finally broke down below 80. My expand, it's now filling this gap down to 75. I would expect it to eventually, you know, fill down to that 75 and, and be, you know, and then probably bounce back up to 80. 80 is now providing a resistance point. Again, it's been pretty much bouncing between, you know, 70 and 80 or so uh, for quite some time. Unless we get, you know, some news, some event. Again, I'd expect it to fill this gap down to 75 and then probably bounce back up, retest 80. Um, similarly with natural gas, you know, it bounces bounces off of this $2 level. Uh, you know, it didn't, didn't make a huge run right now. It looks like it's stable right now, but I would expect it to at some point uh, retest three. It could go down as low as 175 or so. Um, I, I kind of missed the boat here. I probably should have added a, a scalping short-term position and boil here at this two level and would probably uh, consider that uh, the next time. So if it comes back down to two, does that kind of tweezer action again? Uh, I might add a scalping position in boil, short-term uh, swing, short-term scalp uh, using boil and then just, you know, sell it when it peaks out. Uh, we do have a longer-term position in boil still. So again, we see gold's pretty much, you know, we've got pretty significant support now at 2,000. It, you know, breaks down a little bit below 2,000, but pretty much just been uh, chopping around, consolidating right around that 2,000 level. Similarly with silver, around 25. So again, it dips a little bit below 25, but it's got good support around 25. Again, consolidating. Uh, we'll have to, again, get some kind of, you know, uh, risk off move um, to maybe another bank if another bank fails and causes uh, more risk off fear you know maybe that will be the impetus to to push gold and silver back up see this big run in platinum um, 
Copper is kind of broken down. Again, that's a recessionary fear. We saw this run in palladium and platinum. Kind of missed that run. We were watching PAL, P-A-L-L. It didn't really come back down, and then it made this um, significant run up. Again, all the other commodities have been pretty volatile, pretty choppy. I, I did look at some of these ETFs for corn, wheat, et cetera, but uh, again, they're just kind of sitting in the middle of their overall range, don't don't present a real great risk-reward profile. And again, we'll see that tomorrow. Treasuries, you know, declined, and then when we got that, um, you know, risk-off move on Friday, I made a little bit of a a run where on Thursday made a little run up and then on Friday uh, yields went up prices went down um, again I think yields are going to have to go up when the Fed hikes rates again the yields are going to go up price is going to come down um, the dollars you know been sitting between you know one and 102 100 and 102 it chops around a little bit caused some volatility in the dollar denominated commodities like gold silver oil etc um, but again, it's it's just been pretty consolidating, pretty choppy right around 101. So let me grab a quick drink and uh, then we'll talk strategy, see if, uh, if uh, April showers will bring us uh, May flowers in the stock market and other strategies on how we can make money trading in the markets. And I'll also check the chat, see if I'm missing uh, any other questions right now. So uh, uh, Flippa and Easy Mike were talking about cattle. We just saw, you know, some volatility in the cattle area. Um, but as we'll see, you know, the risk reward profile, I, I couldn't find a, a good uh, risk reward profile to, to play those events. That was worth uh, worth chasing them at this time. If you guys know of a better better way to play that, that would be great. So one of the things for, uh, you know, answering the question, will April showers bring May flowers in the stock market is uh, in the past, we talked about this, this adage, don't sell in May, or the, the adage is sell in May and go away. Uh, last year, we talked about, well, we, we don't think that's a good strategy. So our uh, philosophy is don't sell in May and go away. And, and you can listen to our reasoning as to why we say don't sell in May and go away. Uh, in this video, I snipped out those previous portions as well as talking about where does this adage come from, what's its historical basis, etc. cetera. Uh, so you can access that uh, video uh, via the bonus link in our notes and eventually we'll, we'll release that probably once we uh, get into the May timeframe. So again, as a bonus, uh, precursor to getting into May, uh, you can listen to that video as well. Uh, the reason I wanted to get that out uh, now is because there's talk that um, traders, fund managers, etc. may be front running that uh, common adage and may start selling before May. Um, so since everybody kind of knows this uh, philosophy of selling May and go away, uh, we may see that occur prior to May. And this, since this is the last week before we get into May, uh, I wanted to give us a heads up that, you know, if we start to see this sell off, um, particularly, you know, profit taking could be the mega cap tax, especially if Microsoft or Google has uh, less than stellar earnings or poor guidance, etc. We may see a flood of selling. So um, be ready for that. Um, and then also once we get into May, uh, it would not be surprising to see quite a bit of selling. And since there isn't a whole lot of new money coming in, uh, that could push all the, all the indices down, you know. Um, and it's just the money leaving the market and, and the lack of new new money coming in to provide buyers uh, would pu push the markets down, not, you know, any catastrophic 
a recession immediately or whatever, but just, you know, an imbalance between sellers and buyers. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And then, you know, we'll see uh, if we get some May flowers. Um, you know, again, we might get a, a May, a May ra rainstorm of selling uh, if this uh, takes takes foot. So we've been talking a lot about sector rotations. And again, part of my major philosophy is that's what's been, you know, that's the name of the game lately. Um, and it's, you know, pretty much just holding the market up. They're just rotating from the underperforming sector, taking profit in the overperforming sector, putting it into the underperforming sector, uh, rinse and repeat. And these rotations are on a, you know, one day, two day, a very short time frame. Again, not very conducive to long-term swing trading. So it's, you know, that particular strategy is not very con conducive to my type of uh, trading. Uh, but if, you know, you can play the sector rotation on a shorter term, scalping, day trading, et cetera. We have plenty of videos on how to identify a uh, sector rotation, how to play it, how to find the stocks in the sector that's hot for the day, et cetera. So you can see those via all these links. I did want to look at our um, technology breakdown that we had added to our ETF spreadsheet. So just I'll bring that up. And then just a quick reminder that um, our all access and VIP Patreons have uh, access to this spreadsheet 24 by seven. And I'll show you how you can track this components within the technology sector and the rotations and potential direction. So again, if you join our Patreon uh, at the all access or VIP levels, you can access this ETF spreadsheet um, anytime. And tomorrow we'll go through the specific ETFs. But again, I've added a number of the screeners that uh, I've used in the past. So again, you can access all of these uh, various screeners and the screeners tab in our ETF spreadsheet. The one I wanted to look at is one we recently added that breaks down the uh, subsectors of the technology sector. So we've got representatives of the mega cap tech, the fangs, biotech, semiconductors, and then the overall um, NASDAQ. And I thought this was interesting because, again, we see that mega cap tech has been outperforming. It's just kind of holding up there when it hits that resistance point. It you know bounces down a little bit, comes back down to its average. If it happens to hit that uh, bottom trend line, it bounces up. So it's it's, um, it's it's recognizing this support channel pretty significantly. We see the channel's kind of narrowing. Uh, but, again, the fangs, the mega tech, tech cap mega cap techs have been holding up quite a bit again they're using those as a kind of a flight to safety um you know they pour money they figure that it's pretty safe in amazon microsoft google facebook etc um so again when we get a flight to safety part of it is going into those mega cap uh, tech stocks so I'll bounce and biotech again i think that's just an oversold and people wanting you know wanting to uh, go into the oversold thinking there's going to be a bounce. Again, I put out a warning on biotech in general. Uh, we're not pursuing that uh, at all. Uh, if we get some positive results and it does run. So you can see it's run up. It's got heavy resistance at eight. It's in a downward trending channel. So I would expect at some point it to uh, lose favor, roll over. Again, if we get a risk off move, biotech's going to uh, roll over and go down. This one is interesting. You know, we've been trying to play uh, Sox S for a while because every time uh, Sox L reaches this uh, resistance, this upper trend line tended to bounce down. Uh, but we see it's pretty much broken down. Now it's below its uh, lower trend line. So I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get any more plays in semiconductors. Now it's pretty range bound, isn't a whole lot of risk reward. Uh, either way. So I, I don't expect a big push. Uh, I was hoping for another one more push in semiconductors for it to hit that 18 uh, area and get another play in SOXS. I know others of our fellow beach bum traders, I think hopefully Walter uh, made some good money in his SOXS position. I believe so. So congratulations again on that. But again, I think that that may have been played out. You'll you'll see we're still 
watching socks s socks l to see if we happen to get a irrational reaction and a push but uh that that play may be over and again the overall tqqq is is essentially the q's the nasdaq pretty flat it looks like it's rolling over uh so again hopefully this screener will also help you identify the sub sectors within technology and where the potential opportunity uh, you know may be So let me know in the comments and our Discord, etc. If there's any other kinds of breakdowns that you would like to see, other screeners, we can always add those to the screeners tab in our uh, ETF spreadsheet. Okay, so tomorrow we'll talk more about dividend payers and our other strategy. So essentially, as we've been pointing out, you know, the markets are pretty range bound, you know, choppy, not, not a lot of trending in either direction, not a lot of momentum, not a lot of follow through. So while we wait, uh, We've got two strategies for generating income to make money while we wait. One is piling into dividend paying stocks. So tomorrow we'll look at in more detail and I've got some new potential dividend paying stocks to add. Um, so potentially more opportunities to generate income while we wait. And our other um, strategy is with options. We uh, buy or sell covered calls, sell cash secured puts, buy them back cheaper. Again, rinse and repeat, generate our own, uh, quote, dividends, and again, rinse and repeat. So now with the um, decrease in the VIX, the low volatility, uh, decreased IV, implied volatility, uh, the premiums are down, and we'll see that. So this strategy has not been as attractive uh, given the declining VIX. So again, you know, we've got several different ways that we can make money while we wait, uh, generate additional income, and, and whichever one is the most attractive at, at any point in time in any type of market. Again, our main message to traders, old and new, is there's plenty of time, uh, plenty of different ways to make money trading in any market. And uh, our goal is to help you uh, be able to identify those ways to make money trading in the current market conditions. And again, uh, help new traders learn that you can make money in any market, bull, bear, range bound, uh, et cetera. It doesn't have to just be a, a bull market to make money in the, in the market. So uh, we hope that this all helps. So I've got a little bit of time for any questions. If I missed your question before uh, in the chat, please uh, throw it back up in the chat. Also, you can always add, uh, post your questions in the comments to this video. Again, our discords. Uh, you can always ask questions in our discord. Uh, I'll put the link to our discord again up in the banner in a second. Um, Again, our Discord's free to join. Most people start at least in the Beach Party channel in our Discord, but we have channels for different asset classes, different trading styles. We've got a great community of traders, help each other out, help you learn how to trade, how to succeed in your trading career. So we hope you'll join us in our Discord. Um, and uh, again, let's grow the community. Hopefully you like this type of information and you'll share it with other traders, share our Discord with other traders. Let's build build the community up for the mutual benefit of all of our uh, fellow Beach Bum traders. Also, we have a Facebook group. You can find the links. There's an invite to our Discord also in the link section on our homepage, as well as links to our Reddit community, our Facebook group, etc. Also to all of our social media sites. So if you want to uh, message us at a social media site, you can find the links to those on our homepage, which is beachbumtrading.com, but without the U. So again, many ways you can uh, contact us, ask us questions. We'll try to respond as soon as we're able. Again, in the Discord, please uh, tag us. Um, again, our ID is 7313, so accept no imposters. So again, tag us in the Discord so we get notified and can respond to your question as, as soon as we're able.
Okay, just checking to see if I'm missing any questions. Again, if I missed your question, I apologize. Please throw it back up in the chat. And again, otherwise, again, you can put it in the comments, in the Discord, etc. cetera. Uh, any additional questions, if you've got any stocks you'd like us to um, specifically look at tomorrow, uh, we can do that if you let us know. Um, thank you again for joining us for part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week of April 24th through April 28th. Again, tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll do part two of our weekly trading game plan, and we'll be selecting our individual stocks, ETFs, etc., cetera, uh, to put on our top swing trading uh, watch list for this week, put in our bullpen, our shopping list. We'll also uh, review our ETF list in more detail, as I mentioned a couple times, and we can look at the risk rewards, you know, the pros and cons of various ETFs for playing different types of indices, commodities, uh, industries, etc. Uh, we'll also look at our dividend payers and um, uh, Easy Mike's talking about a variety of dividend payers and we can look at the various yields of several of those and again I've got a couple new dividend payers to share with you again tomorrow and we'll look at our option strategies as well and potential opportunities uh, in uh, selling put options and buying back put options is another way uh, to generate income. So we hope you all come back again tomorrow and join us for part two of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of April 24th and April 28th. Thank you all for joining us and have a great day.